Thanks for coming out. Murder, that's a very big word. Uh, uh, Cyberbullying is a form of harassment, so it's definitely not murder. It's suicide, for sure. Thank you. Oh my goodness, okay, so my answer would be suicide. Oh, suicide or yeah. murder. The big problem, the victim of cyberbullying has choice to live or not to live. Suicide after that is still not murder. Oh. Cyberbullying. Okay. People should be more responsible and they should be held responsible for things they say on uh, online media. Suicide or murder? I want to go talk to Barry because this is this is a really tough one. Yeah. You mean the murder? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. To tackle those problems, it's suicide. It's a terrible, awful thing to happen. But I think, by definition, it's it's suicide. Yeah, no. I know. Murder is a strong word. Yeah. Right? But mm -hmm. if, it, if we say just suicide, I don't know. Some, something in me is I like, know, it's, I know. It's I not understand enough. what you're saying. So I'd like to welcome our viewers and, of course, our shooters to the program. We're going to have an open discussion until the round table ends, and we've managed to come to some sort of agreement on a final statement that represents all of us. The topic at hand today is suicide after cyberbullying. Is it simply suicide or is it actually murder? Can someone be at fault for causing someone to take their own life? So let's hear everyone's opinion. So who'd like to go first? I know it's a difficult question, but... Hmm? Well, this is right, I guess. <laughs> All avoiding my... <laughs> so, so someone has to start, yeah. and I guess mm -hmm. perhaps the, the place where we should start as the first thing we should recognize is that it, regardless of our ultimate decision, it's a very serious and a very significant problem, and it reflects a profound tragedy, whatever our decision is, whether mm -hmm. it's yes. suicide or whether it's murder. Now, uh, speaking for the British context, in the past three or four years, cyberbullying has seen huge increases. So some figures say it's at least doubled. Other places I've seen it say at least as high as 80 87% increase in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. And there's also been some very high profile cases of uh, young women mainly committing suicide after experiencing very severe cases mm -hmm. uh, of cyberbullying. But there's some problematic issues there with some of those cases as well. But nevertheless, in Britain, as, and I'm sure in, very, in other countries around the world, it's a very serious problem and it reflects a very profound tragedy whenever it occurs. And it's certainly something that needs to be investigated and more regulation. But Barry, what's your stance? Is it suicide or murder? So having said that it's a, it is an awful and it's a very profound and serious tragedy, it is ultimately, at the end of the day, it's suicide. Mm -hmm. By definition, murder is a, a far different phenomenon. And so I think I'd have to say that it's, it's suicide. Okay. I really think it depends on how you define what murder constitutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are many interpretations that I've mm -hmm. heard. Most people tend to think that, of course, if you have previous intent, but there are many varying definitions on what murder constitutes. I think depending on what jurisdiction or what country you're from, that the laws can be very different. Uh, how you decide uh, what's murder, what's manslaughter, and all being homicide. And that's why many laws in Korea and in the U.S. as well uh, it's unfortunate that uh, these laws only start to go into the, the process of becoming a law until something tragic happens. In mm -hmm. Korea here, for instance, there have been many high-profile cases of people that are famous, or Very even famous in the family. United States, a highly publicized uh, student uh, that went to Rutgers, um, Tyler Clementi. Right. I'm not sure if you ever saw the video uh, or videos uh, about him and also the news media that it was vastly covered because uh, he was a gay person that wasn't ready to come out and someone had basically put online 
a story that uh, basically captured him making out with another guy mm -hmm. without his say so, without his knowing. His roommate and then, did this. Yeah, his yeah. roommate, and then putting it online, into which. Can you only imagine if you're in a sensitive place, especially for someone who is just trying to find out who they are and it's a sensitive su subject, maybe the parents aren't necessarily going to react positively with love toward this situation to where he wasn't ready to deal with this. I mean, I think it's his own time that he should have been able to feel comfortable or be in a place where he felt safe to be able to come out and say, I'm gay, I'm proud to be gay and this, that, but someone else just forced that upon him and he committed but suicide. But it's a nasty prank, but does it constitute murder? What do you guys well, think? You no, know, actually, what Travis mm. is saying th that, you know, we have to think about accountability. Mm. I've been on the fence about this, but one thing that I, I feel strongly about is that because social media is so new, right, the technology continues to evolve, I think we do have to reconsider what the laws are and how we treat mm. this thing, because there's this new thing, right, mm. um, mm -hmm. it's social media. And it's having effects, and so I, I think we have to open our minds to, to what murder is. You know, I yeah, I ag agree on that point. Uh, I think basically, so I think when it comes to social media and like online and every, you know such things, uh, people don't really feel that they are talking to human beings because there is a screen, right? So it it just dehumanizes the interaction. So you become, so you allow, your, you allow yourself to say like horrible things. Mm. And I think people feel that they can say it because it's, of course it's online, right? It's in the cyber world, it's like no one really not, takes they're it. They're not saying it to you. Yeah, they're face. not saying it to you yeah. like directly. Uh, but I think, just, so just like, you know, there's violence and sometimes violence mm -hmm. can lead to murder or death. Verbal violence is also a type of violence. Mm. And if you're intentionally trying to hurt someone with your words, mm. and I mean, yeah, you should definitely be held responsible. Mm. Mm -hmm. And coming back mm. to the laws yeah. about murder and suicide, uh, Russian criminal law distinguishes between murder and suicide. So we have uh, an article introduced in the 80, in the end of 1980s, mm -hmm. I found an internet, <laughs> which is called Incit Incitement to Suicide. Mm -hmm. So the person who is threatening or humiliating another person and with his actions inciting him into suicide mm -hmm. can be sentenced up to three years in prison. Has anyone actually been put into prison because of that law, do you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Until now, I couldn't find that information, mm -hmm. but... Uh, but I think actually when people decide to commit suicide, there's like far more factors than just I was bullied by someone. I think they have, they yeah, suffer exactly. from like, I don't know, maybe other problems in they their lives. They suffer from bullying, but yeah. maybe from bullying yeah. from society itself. Yeah, if it, if it was just bullying, right, mm -hmm. people might be able to somehow like uh, cross that mm -hmm. and not like affect them severely. But mm -hmm. I think people uh, have other things that cause them to be vulnerable to such So you think it's behavior. just suicide? Cyberbullying um, can't be considered? No, no, I, I don't think it's just a simple case of suicide. Mm -hmm. I think uh, um, even if people have some you know, problems in their lives, right, uh, and they're vulnerable, we, are, we, we need to be sensitive to these kind of things. We need to be responsible for things we say, not only for our actions, but also for things that we actually say. Mm. Yeah, and you're awfully quiet. <laughs> no, it's, a quite, it's quite a serious matter. Uh -huh. But also in France, in France there's been uh, also a trend. So one in 10 kids suffering from cyber violence. Wow. But it seems that the cyber bullying is linked to also real book bullying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it just seems to be just an extension of what's going on at school. It's a, in France it seems to be a big problem just at, at school. And that's something we can't really grasp only by reading mm. newspapers. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember how we were at school and how we used to get bullied, or even just bully people just randomly. So I don't know if you did that, but you probably did, did that just like for like 10 minutes and stuff. Jan, did you bully people <laughs> in school? I don't have my jacket Confession right time. now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, bullying is nothing new. I think cyberbullying yeah. is a relatively it's new different. thing, and, and the rate at which it's growing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it just kind of follows the whole sort of social media craze that's taken over, it's, especially with the younger generation. Because right. they get bullied at school, and then right, mm -hmm. yeah. usually they had a break at home, but now yeah. they just keep getting messages, messages, messages. Mm -hmm. And I, I saw something on French TV actually, and some girl had to just leave uh, leave her actual uh, lycée, which is sorry, so you speak mm -hmm. in French, school. her actual school. I understand. 
and um, and it was a, a very, very, very hard time for her. And she actually reached to, to the principal and they couldn't do anything about mm. it because it was beyond their jurisdiction. It was nothing to do with school. It was Facebook. How but, could a school... Yeah, that's, that's what a if you get rid of the internet? I mean, what if you mm. cut off access? If you're a parent and you know that your child is being bullied online, can't you just cut off all access to the internet? That's like walking I, I don't think you Yeah. I don't think you can do it, actually. Their I don't think lives. it's possible. No. They can always find like yes. smart ways of like connecting to like mm -hmm. online and network yeah, but that. I think what can be done is that like I think there are various actors that can take action into preventing that from happening to begin with right parents need to even children right so children at school need to be like educated regarding how the use of internet they need to be uh, uh, I don't know NGOs need to raise awareness well, towards there, there these is, kind of issues parents also on. need to be educated and like taught how to mm -hmm. take care of their kids and how to you know prevent maybe try to prevent this these things happening from uh, to their kids. Well, Microsoft is putting up mm. a system. Um, it's, it's actually they're actually putting up a big campaign using online bloggers on mm. YouTube, like guys, you know, guys that speak to the camera mm. face to face, mm. and they're really loved by like eight to fifteen year olds, especially in, in France. Mm -hmm. People talking about kind of slice of life material, mm -hmm. and these guys now are doing a whole campaign in France to like prevent cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And recently I read very interesting research by psychologists uh, on cyberbullying. He said there is one big difference between bullying and cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. Usually in case of simple bullying, uh, offline, mm -hmm. the <clears throat> buller and his victim meeting face to face. So mm -hmm. as a rule, bullers mm -hmm. um, are stronger guys, some mm -hmm. right. kind of physically leaders, stronger, physically stronger right. or some right. group leaders. But cyberbullying is about anonymity. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So according to statistics, uh, bullies who were harassed by another children at another ch chart, they acted as offenders. Mm. Uh, so it's a vicious so, cycle. Huh? Yeah, 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 victims yeah, yeah, yeah. turned into yeah. bullies. So, uh, kids who felt some inferiority complex, uh -huh. they tried to attack another children. They find somewhere to bend. Yes. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about it a, doesn't uh, help. an actual case that wasn't quite mm -hmm. um, so. infamous, I guess. The British teenager Hannah Smith. Right, Hannah Smith. Yeah. Right. So that was a very, mm -hmm. a very famous case that happened in Britain very quite recently, actually. Mm -hmm. I think within the past 12 months or so, mm -hmm. and certainly in 2014. Mm -hmm. Right. And after uh, she committed suicide and she had apparently been the victim of this extensive campaign of cyberbullying uh, by people, like you said, in her social network. At the, and at the time, her father said, well, the people who perpetrated this or perhaps even the people who ran the social network that she was victimized on, they should be charged with manslaughter or perhaps mm -hmm. even murder. Mm -hmm. And several cultural commentators sort of picked up this idea. And even the uh, British Prime Minister, David Cameron, he said, made some very strong comments and uh, kind of in support that we need more extensive mm -hmm. laws to govern cyberbullying. However, Hannah Smith's actually perhaps a, a cautionary tale that we can't call cyberbullying or perhaps we shouldn't call cyberbullying murder because it turned out uh, several days later as the investigation oh, yeah. progressed that she'd been she's sending she's these messages to herself. Why would she do that? Yeah. Well, mm. we can only well, speculate. Totally. Perhaps she had English, some actually. underlying emotional issue or... Uh, uh, I would we, say it's we a sign of reaching out for help. Maybe she yeah. thought that some people yeah, would yeah. come to her rescue and post more supporting messages? That, that might well have been it, but she hmm. didn't get any support. Um, her family were unaware of these. I don't think they were aware of the activity that was taking place on that social network. She had an older sister as well hmm. who didn't pick up on it. But they knew, the family knew that she'd been she had been bullied in real life. She'd received physical bullying at her school. Oh. Uh, but this well, isn't schizophrenia really linked to bullying sometimes as well? Maybe, I don't oh, know. I don't know the story. I don't. I don't know. But but she. But and we understand that cyberbullying is more pervasive. It, it can continue 24 hours a day, you know, um, regardless of where you are. But still, does that cause suicide? Definitely not. Is it intentional? Physical bullying. The environment. There's, the environment is probably there, there's a lot of factors actually. Mm playing here and so there is obviously the bullying but there's there must be also the family unit and other things that led to that to that to a suicide. I think yeah, Kevin, I think, Kevin really mm -hmm. hit it on the head though is that because we're a little bit older mm -hmm. even you touch base on this a bit yeah. though too is that parents nowadays they actually need to reevaluate 
what the 21st century has to offer their kids in terms of mm -hmm. online different websites that they go to. And that's why there's constant laws that are being changing because mm -hmm. we don't know how actually to react or a actually maybe nip this in the bud. And so I think it's really important to understand that uh, it's an ongoing process and we're going through the growing pains. Yeah, and yeah. so that's why I really feel that they should be held accountable to mm. show that, hey, this is not cool because mm -hmm. to a certain extent, the internet, when you write something online, what is it called when you lie about someone, for instance, like in the newspaper? Mm -hmm. It's defamation, it's a yeah, libel yeah, suit, yeah. right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're on the internet, the same can be applied and not everyone, because of anonymity, they should be subject to be responsible for what they do. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. clean internet, I mean, I've been a troll myself too. <laughs> Sometimes I go on like Reddit and I make the cheekiest remarks ever, just trying to be funny yeah, or stupid or you. just get responses, okay. right? <laughs> uh -huh. Same with Ask yeah. FM. I've actually posted a couple pictures uh -huh. up there and it, I, I actually laugh because of some of the horrible you know, comments that I get about you know, my forehead's too big or like because of my slanted eyes or, you know, just something. Uh -huh. But I think it's funny, whereas right. some people, obviously, if they're not necessarily, if they're insecure about something mm -hmm. and they go on these sites and if they're looking for affirmation but it's completely the opposite, then yeah, it's going to have an effect on them. Some I of these people who end up committing suicide are actually already in the throes of depression, right? Yeah. Severe yeah. Yeah. depression. And, you know, one of the cases that uh, a sort of provoked suicide could be murder, is that when somebody is sort of on the edge, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. just on the edge because of their depression, <laughs> right? And, and we want to say, well, I'm not doing anything. I'm not, I mean, I'm not making the cup fall, but sometimes it just takes the slightest breath to push somebody over the edge. But how aware are you that the cup is on the edge, though? Yeah. I think as a society, we have even a bigger responsibility towards protecting marginalized and disempowered people. Uh, specifically those people who are right on the edge that you were just describing. Uh, we, have, we have to take care of these people, and we have to make sure that these people are not pushed, you know, that no one really does push them over the edge. Mm. Yeah, we, need sis, we need systems to help these people. Right? Yeah, I think. I mean, in so, France, we have mm. like, I mean, I'm sure everywhere you have hotlines, I guess, mm. for yes. everyone. Yes. Mm. So I guess that's a system, but we need to, I guess, maybe, well, not maybe, for sure, educate the bullies and show them mm. the impact that it, it, can, it can have, maybe a shock campaign. Mm. But also, I think there's something else that online, the, the system that the companies can do. So if they can track you and they can track your posts, and if you're on, on social network and you're posting some things which, of course, of course reflect your mode, right? Your mood or your, your emotional uh, status. Mm. So, you know, if, if there's a person who's, who keeps posting things that are alarming, mm. that mm -hmm. you might, m might cause you to think, okay, maybe there's like something your brother, wrong huh? with you. Yeah, <laughs> you're getting very close, close to yeah, something yeah. very yeah. dubious. And if someone's Terrific typing a lot of things, of, uh, that, that could lead to marketing. Uh -huh. Well, hold, you yeah. know, when I was researching adultery for a certain TV show <laughs> recently, I found that every time I logged onto the computer, I had these advertisements come into me about <laughs> adultery. And then these yeah, emails, like and then Kevin. these emails. Yes. And, you know, and these women coming at your door. I don't know about them, I don't know about them. But, you know, that, that's Big Brother's already at, at the doorstep, I mean. But um, it's already there. Right, that's it's already my, That's there. my point, that it's there. Right. It should be functioning, you know, since it's a tool and it already mm -hmm. exists, we need to make, to, to make a, the best out of it. We need to use it for the good thing. cause. It's like, do the shooters think that cyberbullying is a more severe form of bullying than, let's say, the traditional offline form of bullying when it was kind of physical, kind of just right in your face? Do you find cyberbullying more severe, more, more extreme? In, insidious easy. emotional impact, I think, perhaps. Uh, I think it reaches us in your in a personal place, right? It's, it's wherever you are. It can be can't in escape. your bedroom at home. Yeah, exactly. You're and it's easy for you to get engaged in cyberbullying because you, you're, you think to yourself, I'm not really like harming that person. There's no violence. I'm not mm. beating anyone up. But I'm just saying words, you know? I'm just making a remark. So it's I'm easier to become a bully. Yeah, of course. Right. And you know, speaking about victims of this cyberbullying, the data, statistics data for Russia and the European Union says that 28% of this <laughs> Victims are children between 11 and 12 years old. Oh. Yeah, elementary students, yeah, like yeah. I mentioned. Elementary right. students. 
So I don't think that we can call these children murderers. Mm -hmm. They are rather unaware of mm -hmm. their own actions. Mm -hmm. And another problem, maybe they lack uh, social attention and yeah, some social right, right. communication. Because if we look now at the school, either in Russia or Korea or United States, children spend less and less time together. They spend more and more time with TV, mm. different gadgets mm. or studying. But children don't understand mm. the impact they can have on someone, yeah. on another child. And if you put the internet on top of that, yeah. it yeah. just yeah. makes yeah. it Im impossible. Yeah. Like I remember like when I was a kid, some, some like five years later, I would think, Oh, I was mean to that kid, but mm. at the time I didn't think, mm. you know. Jan, what did yeah. you do? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> you know, yet Jan, we still but hold kids, children once. responsible for things they do. Mm. Shooter, suicide after bullying, is it suicide or murder? I'm not sure if there's been any change in your opinions regarding mm -hmm. this rather sensitive and very difficult topic. But we're going to divide into two teams and give you a chance to perhaps persuade each other, okay? Mm. So let's okay. begin um, with the division of the teams. Who here believes that it is suicide? It's simply suicide. I think it's suicide. Okay. And who believes it's murder? All right. So we have a split team once again. The team that believes it is suicide, you'll be going into this side and the murder side to this side and you'll gear up with some arguments for the final round, okay? Okay. All right, shooters, gear up. Okay. Physically bullying people mm -hmm. and then putting it online. Yeah. You can't yeah. call that... Can you call that? It's cyberbullying. Bullying. It just isn't murder. Is it like murder? It's just not direct conflict. And to know uh. to be accused of murder, uh, we need very strong uh, proof. There's no point yes. criminalizing an 11 year old mm -hmm. or a 12 year old because they've been bullying someone. Then so maybe, maybe there should be laws like this for, for adults then? What do you think? Yeah, but isn't that just harassment? Shouldn't that just yes. be covered by harassment laws? Yeah, that uh, doesn't work. And you can't be feeling the jails with kids, there's, yeah, there's already a, enough. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, is like when I did my research is I think by country it's different. Some countries actually say it is murder. Mm -mm. And it's like, well, I didn't mean to kill that guy. You're accountable. You You're are accountable. accountable. Yeah, you should you be accountable. held accountable, right? Like, it's not funny being mean to people. I'm sorry, that's what I think actually. Yeah. Personally, I don't think it's funny if you're mean to people. Right. That doesn't make me laugh. Yeah, but if, if you're mean to that person and that person ends up killing themselves because you were mean to them, aren't you complicit? You can say it's like an accessory to murder. Yeah, yeah, you're an accessory because to murder. murder. And... So shooters, you are now armed and ready, am I right? Yes. Yes. Okay, well from now on, any changes in your opinions will be tracked by a gauge. You all start at 100%, convinced of your own side's argument, but each time the opposing team says something that you find persuasive or reasonable, you will press on the minus button. Now, of course, if someone on your team says something persuasive or reasonable, you would press the plus button. And the viewers and I will be able to track where your opinions are going. But we're going to start now by some opening statements. Why don't we begin with the suicide team? Okay? okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we have quite a strong statement. So we think that cyberbullying is by definition not murder because the victim has a choice. It's a powerful argument. Yep. Murder side. What's your statement? Um, I think basically our statement is that we have a really strong feelings and we feel really strongly about bullying to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. We feel that if bullying leads to murder, then if bullying leads to suicide, then the person who committed or who, who uh, uh, was engaged in bullying actions should be held responsible for their actions. We don't, we don't think it's funny uh, that if someone is being bullied or someone bullies someone because they, they're like, 
I don't know, they think uh, just being mean to people randomly without any, uh, without any like just justified reason is not something that is funny and it's not something that should be taken lightly. We feel that whoever commits these kind of things, it's still abuse, it's still verbal violence and it leads, if it leads to death or suicide, that's even worse. Yeah. And serious measures need to be taken in this action. If we were to convince that, we'd say, yes, cyberbullying is intrinsically wrong. We would all be in agreement here. But when you say it's a definition, by definition, it's not murder, then we would probably question what your definition of murder really is. So if we were to put it in a statement, it's more like cyberbullying um, and or just bullying is the reason, if it is the reason behind a person's suicide, then it's under the umbrella of murder. Also adding to that point of like choice, right? Mm. When, when someone is depressed and when someone are suffering from a mental situation, their, their judgment is impaired. Mm. Their ability to make decisions rationally is impaired. So we, they don't, we, we, so th this aspect of freedom of choice and are they making the informed choice or the correct choices also comes into play. So, you know, then do they have a choice or do they ha not have a Suicide is a delicate mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's exactly. It's very unique. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. But you're avoiding the but question. But it's definitely not murder, though. Because murder involves... Well, well, murder right. actually involves intent, yeah. a weapon, yeah. and a death, right? And in some of these cases, not all of these cases, mm. but in some of these cyberbullying cases, we see intent, where somebody wants to exact revenge. Mm -hmm. We see what we think is a weapon is actually a person's uh, depression. When somebody's clinically depressed, they're much more likely to commit suicide. I mean, if, if they or, have this pre-existing tendency. Words can be weapons sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, words hurt as much as actions sometimes. Is mightier than this word, right? mm -hmm. There's a causality there where you can sort of take advantage of somebody's condition, which is a medical condition. Just like you could pull the plug on a, on a heart, um, on some kind of heart monitor. machine, mm -hmm. monitor or something. You can pull the plug on somebody emotionally and cause their death. And that's why we feel it's like a, under the umbrella, it's a form of murder. Sure, of course. Nevertheless, let's say, for example, there's an issue of real-world bullying. Say in a workplace, say someone is victimizing another person over a sustained period of time, not physically, just verbal harassment of one kind or of another in the workplace for a long period of time, one person to another person, and the victim of that issue, the victim of that bullying, commits suicide. Now, there's already laws in place, okay, these are harassment laws which deal with exactly that type of crime. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're not, they're not murder laws. If the person hasn't killed the victim, they've been harassing them and that person has killed themselves. Now, that, that just isn't murder. So when that enters the, the cyber arena, when that goes online, it doesn't suddenly become, but is it, it doesn't it suddenly being become complicit? murder. Isn't being uh, you know, a, a factor that drive that person to killing themselves? Yes, I mean, but they need factor, to be held responsible. That factor isn't factors. murder. So would you say, in the, the example that I, I described, would, you, would we call that murder? You're you know, saying you want to change so murder? One, one of the things the about social networks, if though, If the family unit was one factor, then would you say the family is murderers as well? The thing about well, social some networks families is are, that Some parents are, like, charged so with negligence. People. I mean, on the negligence, internet, negligence, not murder. Are, you know, um, still, I mean, they are held responsible. And bullies should be held responsible for harassment, as well. Maybe but but not for so the, the key difference is death. I think that was a key word here. Let's say, um, if we try to make it a little bit more personal, someone you knew, hopefully it was never happened, but a child um, that, um, maybe your own child or someone else's child that you knew, um, not quite an adult yet, not quite fully rational and in control mm -hmm. of their feelings, mm -hmm. at a very vulnerable stage, committed suicide because mm -hmm. of cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were in that position, it's very hard to be level-headed. You would want to, would you, would you not want to say, someone has to pay, mm -hmm. my, my mm -hmm. child or this mm -hmm. child is dead. But it, are the perpetrators the same age mm -hmm. as the victim? Usually in cases of cyberbullying, usually mm -hmm. they are the same. Yeah. So are but you saying that 11 or 12 year olds who commit cyberbullying should be classified as murderers? So who's responsible for the child? Well, let's look at the but case of Hannah Smith. Them. Even her mm -hmm. father didn't think that the people who 
who were uh, allegedly cyberbullying mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. were were murderers. He went after the social networks. Yeah, he because said it's the also, social they're networks. also responsible, and they should be held responsible okay, for so allowing he, such thing to happen. Okay, exactly. Mm -hmm. But he said that the social networks should be held responsible in terms of they've committed manslaughter, or they've they've in some way taken part in manslaughter. Mm -hmm. He didn't. He didn't wasn't go really directly to the bullies. Well, yeah, to the bullies themselves. Let's also look at Megan Meyer from mm -hmm. the United States of America. Mm -hmm. This was a, a teenager who I think, under the age of sixteen, right, uh, who was trapped. Um, she had a friend. They had a falling out. That friend's mother wanted to exact revenge upon Megan Meyer, the teenager. Mm -hmm. So that woman created a fake online account lured Megan Meyer to become friends with a fictional boy and actually had other children, teenagers, writing these fictional posts. They were uh, under the age of 18, so they were older than the victim, but still mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. technically. Um, and they essentially gained the, the full trust and confidence of this, of this girl, Megan Meyer, and then turned on her mm -hmm. and said vicious things. They said, you should die. And Unfortunately, she killed herself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, the, the thing, I, I use this metaphor already, mm -hmm. if, if this is maybe a healthy child and we only bully them a little bit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they stay on the table. But if you have a child who's clinically depressed and they're just on the edge, I'm not, I'm not sure we can walk away and but just Kevin, let them... But Kevin, once again, how can you tell whether a child yeah. is... Like, this is you sometimes you don't even find. know when it's... It doesn't yeah, even when matter it's someone, yeah, it you can tell or not. What we're, saying, what we're saying is that they, those who are cyberbullying should mm. still be held accountable and that it should be under the umbrella of murder because in, in essence, maybe it's an accessory mm. to murder because I don't know how the laws are in your certain countries, mm. but it still is under the umbrella of murder. And when you have something like involuntary manslaughter, mm -hmm. where you have a di direct correlation to the person's death, but you didn't necessarily mean to kill them, mm -hmm. they're still liable because of that. They're still responsible, they're still accountable mm -hmm. because they were partially the cause of someone else's death. And so what we're saying is that when it should be tried, it should be tried under murder. Well, most but going back Most to your Most bullies question. are seven, mm. uh, what, between 11 and 15, seven. right? Or something. Most, but not all. Right? Yeah. I think. To not try them for Trying, uh, saying that every infraction mm. of which mm. might count as some type of cyberbullying should be classed under the umbrella. We didn't say every type, mind you, that the end result is suicide. So Always. where, well, then you've got the an issue result. of definition. How do you account for where issues of cyberbullying accumulate. How do, you, how do you quantify where the blame lies? Say that there's one victim and there's several people who've okay, enough, been yes. uh, committing hmm. cyberbullying against that person. Maybe one person only made one comment. Maybe another person's been doing it for several weeks. Maybe another person's only been doing it for a month. Hmm. Even if it's many people, you know, the US unfortunately hmm. has this history of hazing deaths hmm. in which many people can attack one person all in good fun in a fraternity or a right. band this person unfortunately dies, it's not that it's not murder. I mean, they died. Somebody mm -hmm. killed them. And the fact that it was many people versus just one, it's not, you know, first degree premeditated cold blood murder, but it's a form of murder. Mm -hmm. it's, it's under the umbrella. So do you guys, do you believe that an anti-cyber bullying law should be passed? I mean, it's a fairly new form of bullying, but it seems to be gaining a lot of traction and it seems to be spreading an alarming rate. Should we pass some laws to better protect the victims and go the after the... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Agree. Yeah. 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 That's, yes. that's what's been happening Maybe. in Britain. They've been struggling to catch up. Like you said, it's a new phenomenon. Mm -hmm. But what they're trying to do, I think, is trying to scale the current existing harassment laws to mm -hmm. cover what happens. I, in I think online. that's completely wrong. We had a, a, an issue called Gamergate in the US recently mm -hmm. that was actually between mm -hmm. adults. Um, there's a lot of gender discrimination against women in the gaming world, which is, mm. which is filled with teenagers but also adults. Um, and there was an, uh, an incident that came up where hackers posted personal information of a woman online, put uh, an incriminating story against her, and essentially activated thousands and thousands of anonymous harassers mm. to send her hate mail, mm. make phone calls against her father, um, you know, so these things are verging into the real world. So the internet has this pernicious ability to sort of, you said scale, right, scale the laws, mm -hmm. to 
just massively amplify the scale of harassment mm -hmm. um, to ways that can be murderous, we yeah. feel. I don't think that basically passing a law is enough. I think it should not be left only to the judicial system to deal with it. I think the educational system to be, need yeah. to be in on it. No, no, Civil yeah. society yeah. needs to be in on it. This is a huge thing and I think it's a cultural thing. I think it's, it differs from country to another. In some societies bullying are, is not a big thing but in some societies it leads to suicide. And in those societies uh, some serious actions need to be taken in order to uh, try to, you know, to stop that from happening and protect I those children. Mm -hmm. Mainstream civil society in most countries mm. would widely reject the idea that cyberbullying, whether it leads to suicide or not, should be classified as umbrella. Yes. Well, let's I, still say, I don't know. That, that doesn't say, matter, but they need like, to do something about it. Let me, like let me interject here. Yes. Why don't we go to the streets of Seoul to see what mm -hmm. the average Korean thinks about this issue? Because Koreans, unfortunately, are no strangers to cyberbullying and also mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. issue of youth suicide. So uh, let's take it to the okay. streets. Jugumlu yo jindam kage mo sasirin sasal budanen tasari do kada go sengakam. Nomu toge kugu kugu pal kugu nomu gatse. Jagi maam gatse mundi go gatse. Kero wo so chugin mo ramat songa jika jagi e uye so. 자기에 의해서가 아니라 본인 선택했으니까 자살이긴 한데 사회에서 너무 몰고 가니까 안타까웠죠. 외부에서 주는 자극에 의해서 자살을 택하지 않았을까라는 생각이 타서 한번 생각했습니다. Just because someone uh, prompts someone because of a bad situation, it's still their decision. So, yeah. Not directly, actually. Gossip about it. So we heard from the average Korean on the street and it seemed overwhelmingly that most Koreans believe that it's murder, mm. that if they were driven to commit suicide, it wasn't really a personal choice. They were driven to suicide by the cyber bullying. Has that changed your opinions at all? I have to say I'm yes. genuinely surprised. Mm -hmm. I'm genuinely surprised. I would never have expected that, that outcome. Uh, perhaps it's because it's such an emotional issue. People have a, an emotional, more of an emotional Let response. Let me ask you this. Have you ever yeah, experienced yeah, yeah. it yourself? No. Have you ever been so low in your life that the thoughts of suicide or despair that you have no one to talk to? Mm -hmm. Has it ever, have you ever felt those feelings yourself? Uh, any of you, I, I would be curious. Or have you been I mean, around someone who's we've all depressed? Felt, suffered from some type of depression mm -hmm. or not. But I'm talking about. No, we're looking at the standpoint, if mm -hmm. you can empathize for a moment, mm -hmm. of some mm -hmm. of the people in the cases of mm -hmm. suicide after cyberbullying, to where is they felt like they couldn't talk to their parents, mm -hmm. talk to their friends, that they were an outcast in social media, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. anywhere that they go. And because I have no way to, an outlet to get rid of this grief, that they feel like that's the only way out. Mm -hmm. But no one's saying that suicide isn't a profound and awful tragedy. Of course. So you're but appealing to an emotional value judgment here, and that just simply isn't appropriate, right? It's At a not society level, when you're trying to make a law which deals with a tragedy like that, I think you have a responsibility to not become overwhelmed by emotion, right? You have to recognize the scale of the tragedy, but you, of course, remember, we're all functioning adults in a society, we have to make a, a law that deals with that issue appropriately. So what isn't called for is classifying them or saying that uh, your actions here makes you, you're a murderer. You know, but what about the, what about the older, not stopped. realistic? Least, you know, they of course, need to they be need stopped. to be stopped. They need to be, uh, you know, detected maybe or like mm -hmm. spotted and they mm -hmm. need to be stopped. Mm -hmm. It's just like, you can't... It doesn't can, talk about yeah. children bulliers though, mm -hmm. I mean, because cyberbullying happens in all ranges. So would you agree that if you're over the age of 18, mm -hmm and you're complicit to uh, suicide via bullying, that that would be under the umbrella of murder? Same as harassment, suicide via harassment. harassment. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting that we're on this subject. When you think about internet censorship, mm -hmm. what country comes to mind first? I'm just China? curious. China. North Korea. China. China. China, exactly. I have some interesting info on the bullying laws of China, and I, it's detailed that I'm going to read to you. If a victim is insulted or slandered, or groundless rumors which conflict with China's national interests are posted online and the posting receives over 5,000 hits or is reposted to different places over 500 times, 
the perpetrator may receive up to three years of imprisonment. Mm -hmm. Also, if the victim or the victim's family feels psychologically trauma, or if they have psychological trauma, excuse me, due to the bullying, if they harm themselves in some way or commit suicide, the perpetrator may also receive up to three years of imprisonment. So once again, falling under this umbrella mm. of murder, I think that's even though under <laughs> they're China's mm. themselves, mm -hmm. they don't necessarily classify it, but this is just it. another mm -hmm. extension of mm -hmm. the example Criminal that we're trying to uh -huh. get across. Mm -hmm. I, I think the difficulty is, by, again, by definition, that it's not we can, murder. We can yeah. distribute <laughs> the sense of murder. I mean, like you said, you know, if it's one person, two people versus a hundred people, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we're not suggesting capital punishment for the hundred people involved, but mm. I think we have to imagine, uh, you know, a new sense of what murder is mm -hmm. online, but which is that it can be it can be distributed <laughs> over a large group of people, right. but it's no less murder. It's mm -hmm. no less murder. Kevin begs the question mm -hmm. because you guys are so adamant mm -hmm. about what your definition mm -hmm. is. Tell us what the definition of murder. <laughs> is. Definition of murder. Well, we said it at the start, right? So when you have no choice, so I'm the problem, and then you said, oh. Well, kind of stuck in their own brain so they don't have a choice. That's what we think someone that's about to attempt suicide has a choice. But what is the definition of murder? Murder, murder. Not suicide. So a definition of murder, so in any murder, whatever type of murder it is, the victim has no choice. So the element of choice is entirely absent when so murder takes place. So if the element place. of choice is taken away, then that would classify as murder. So in the cases yes. of people who don't really have good, or like in, their judgment is impaired, they can't really make decisions, would you still classify that as murder? Because they don't murder really have a freedom of choice. Kind of or there is the decision making process Because the umbrella that we're really trying rational. to make is that it's just, if you are an accessory to taking a life. Manslaughter, uh, manslaughter isn't murder either by definition. That might be definition is level. not, but depending it's on a level, jurisdiction, a depending on murder. countries, they actually try it as a murder trial. California mm -hmm. has a law that states that the reckless mm -hmm. indifference to life mm -hmm. can be prosecuted mm -hmm. as murder. And this, mm -hmm. this relates to drunk driving, which is to say that person has no intent to kill somebody. Mm -hmm. But if you have a car, then you've got a weapon. If you drink, you're choosing to spin that roulette wheel. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we see mm -hmm. in bullying, because mm -hmm. the weapon is the state of mind. Yeah, it, per it puts somebody there, and this, the intent is that they're gambling is the with, with the bullying. the 100% reason that person died is, is that accident, nothing else. Right? Uh, it's but not the when, only reason, but, but it's probably the reason But when you talk about this tipping edge, edge. Right. It's all this before that brought the glass here, you know? That's true. Well, so all these people yeah. should be persecuted for murder as well, and that, I think that's not even possible to create a law to to prosecute all these people or things that happened before tipping over the edge. But there's a difference between pushing somebody in a stable state and pushing somebody who's on the you edge. You don't know that they're on the edge. Which I is why you shouldn't gamble and you shouldn't... It doesn't really matter. In a we don't think it, state. it doesn't matter. We know or no not, it matters. We don't think it matters. We just initially, from the get-go, we think bullying or cyberbullying mm -hmm. or any kind of abuse or harassment is wrong to begin with and we need a more strict approach with that because apparently the current status quo is not really working. So It's we just... just Flourishing. Everything. We just heard an example of China having very specific laws against yeah. cyberbullying. I understand that French um, law also has some very sort of strict standards against cyberbullying. Yeah, bullying. I actually found there's actually something in France in place. So for really severe bullying that affects the victim's uh, mental health, mm -hmm. uh, the bully can receive up to one year prison sentence wow. and a 15 euro fine, 15,000 euro fine. Okay. And if it's actually online, so we, we were talking about just bullying mm -hmm. before, but now online, and if the bullying was done by, an, by a minor, it could be a maximum prison sentence of three years with a fine of 45,000 euros. Oh, wow. So Ooh. that could make you think twice. So if the victim so. was a minor? Yes. That is quite so severe. severe. We have five years, five years? in Russia Whoa. for inducement to suicide, uh -huh. which mm -hmm. includes threats and harassment mm -hmm. and all kind of. <laughs> and the point is that yet that's not a deterrent enough because cyberbullying still happens. So maybe we need to take a harsher measure just to deter people and from it. And maybe it. also it's the fact that they say for severe bullying and that's the mm. fine line to actually yeah. define. Yeah. How do you define severe yeah, bullying? Severe yeah. bullying. <laughs> well, shooters, we've hit bullseye. Oh, Ooh. we have. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs>
Everyone, everyone seems surprised, but yeah. no agreement. One side won, and that is oh. the murder side, oh, which can be quite surprising. Oh. <laughs> you look crying. surprised, <laughs> and yet you did the pushing of the buttons. I guess we did. Yeah, <laughs> uh, a little shocked. Uh -huh. Someone just bent over. So. I wonder if you were swayed by the Koreans on the streets. <laughs> oh, yes, very well it was a strong so? message. Okay. So now we have to come up with a statement, a unifying statement that we can all agree with. Yes. And although they have one, I'm not sure if you want to take it exactly, their initial statement. Which was? What was your initial statement? When cyberbullying cyber is the reason behind a person's suicide, then it's murder. Then it should be considered well, murder. Yeah, murder is yeah. too, too yeah. big of an umbrella. So we need to qualify that in some, some way, don't we? We need to suggest that it's the degree or the severity to go for a case by case basis. Yeah. 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 Maybe it uh -huh. should be covered by special law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We agree to that. I like mean, extreme if extreme in extreme case, cases of cyberbullying, which leads yeah. to suicide, then yeah. it's considered extreme. Murder. So, what's the statement? So, if an extreme, extreme case of cyberbullying is the reason behind a person's suicide, then it's murder. So, I think, I think we can all we agree, can agree on that. Yeah, I think so. so, the question that shooters asked was. Suicide after cyberbullying, is it suicide or murder? And our answer is, if an extreme case of cyberbullying is behind a person's suicide, it can be considered murder. And that was our statement for this edition of Shooters. Shooters, another difficult question, but well done. And um, we'll see you again next week, as well as our viewers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thanks. Alright guys. Wait on.